Hey guys, this is Peter with the Command Valley bringing you another Commander Deck Tech. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing it, check out the link in the description below. We'll have a copy and pasteable deck list that you can paste right into their deck builder and buy your singles there. It supports the channel and you can get them shipped right to your door. If you want to support the channel directly, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash command valley to sign up today and get some sweet perks. Today I'm going to be building a deck for Jorn, God of Winter. He's a double-sided legendary snow creature god. He costs two and a green on his front side. He's a 3-3. Three, three. And he says whenever Jorn attacks, untap each snow permanent you control. On the back side, he is Cauldron the Rhyme Staff. It's a legendary snow artifact for one of blue and a black and it says tap you may play target snow permanent card from your graveyard this turn if you do it enters the battlefield tapped so the most interesting part of this card is obviously the front the ability to untap everything you control basically if you're playing a lot of snow things is really really powerful and so we're going to use that to our advantage to get an insane amount of mana and get a lot of value through our combat phase that's not very common for a sultai deck i feel but we are going to try to take as much advantage of it as we can. 13 of the permanents in our deck are non-snow and the rest are snow. And each one of those non-snow permanents has a very specific purpose in the deck and it makes it run a little bit more smoothly. The backside is nice, but we most likely won't be seeing it in most games because Jorn's effect on the front is what we're building around. You can definitely build a, an entirely different deck around the backside, but the front side is what we're focusing on today. So I've tried to keep the deck relatively budget. There are a couple of cards that are a little bit more expensive, but I haven't gone the route of making a really expensive snow deck. I will be including towards the end of the video my, my list of some includes if you want to go a little bit off budget, more expensive, and have some spicier cards in your deck. But I'm confident in the deck that I've built that it's pretty solid on the combat front and I think it'll just be fun to play. So the first exploit that we are going to have with Jorn is things that untap, specifically snow things that untap that give us some extra value because they can tap again. There are just a couple of these, but it seems to be a common theme that you can tap them to get some sort of a benefit. And then if you attack with Jorn, you can untap them and tap them again for the same benefit in the same turn. So it kind of doubles the effects that you're seeing on these creatures and artifacts. Let's start with Frost Augur, who you can pay a snow and tap it to look at the top card of your library. If it's a snow card, you may reveal it and put it into your hand. That's really handy to get down very early in the game and get some extra advantage off the top. And like we said earlier, most of the cards in the deck are snow cards, and that's going to be a huge advantage for us. Next, we have Pilfering Hawk, which similarly has a snow and tap ability, and you get to draw a card and then discard a card. So again, another card advantage engine that you can take advantage of multiple times a turn with Jorn. And last but not least, we've got Icebind Pillar, which similarly taps for a snow mana and can tap target artifact or creature again letting you tap down things during combat and then untapping and retapping to to tap more things all of these things will help you either get more card advantage or get through during your combat really really helpful things to have on the board i won't go into the mana dorks right now i'll include those in the ramp section but there are a considerable amount of mana dorks and mana rocks that are snow that you can untap this way i'll just go into the specifics later all right next up we've got our combat mana sinks these are the bread and butter of the deck if you have a lot of mana at your disposal you're going to want to tap all of your mana to pump into these mana sinks then swing with jorn and your other things and then everything will untap including the lands that you spent to activate the abilities on these things and let you tap all of those again to pump them up even more so some of these things are going to get absolutely huge and really really fast I will mention first that we have Crufix, God of Horizons, and Horizon Stone. If you aren't able to spend all of your mana all at once, you can at least tap them to pump them into 
your mana pool, have Crew Fix or Horizon Stone out, and then attack with Doran, untap everything, and then you'll have double your mana once the combat ends, and then you can cast some sorceries if that's what you needed to do. All right, first up for our mana sinks, we have Ascendant Spirit, which is a new card from Kaldheim. It has three abilities. The first one, you pay two snow mana, and it becomes a Spirit Warrior with base power and toughness two, three. You pay three snow mana to make it a Spirit Warrior Angel with flying with base toughness four, four if it's already a warrior. And if it's already an angel, you can pay four snow mana to put two plus one plus one counters on it, and it will gain whenever this creature deals combat damage to it. You draw a card. So essentially, all you need is access to five untapping snow permanents that will generate you mana. And then you go into combat, you tap five to pump into the first and second effect here to make it a spirit warrior angel with four four. And then when Jorn attacks, everything will untap and you have the opportunity before it does damage to activate that again and make it a 6-6 six, six that will draw you some cards as well. Really powerful to have on the board and it's super cheap too, so you can start pumping that into it even if you don't have Jorn out. Next we have Avalanche Caller, which for two mana will make a 4-4 four, four elemental with Hexproof and Haste out of a snow land that you control. That's not a high price to pay, and you can have a board full of snow lands if you have the right mana to attack with. And this can also help to protect your board in case a whole bunch of things are swinging. You can just pump a bunch of mana into the Avalanche Caller and make a whole bunch of elementals that can block. Chilling Shade is... Really simple, it's a flying 1-1 one, one that you can pay one snow mana repeatedly to get plus one, plus one. So uh, however much snow mana you pump into it, that's just going to all untap and then you can retap it to make it even bigger and have a massive creature with flying swinging at one of your opponents. Grim Dragger will similarly pump itself up and give itself some evasion. It does cost one more to do each of these pump ups, so it's not as quick at getting as high as Chilling Shade does, but it does have a higher starting point than the Chilling Shade, so it's good on its own even if you don't have the mana to spend on it. Ice Hide Troll will similarly pump itself up, but you do have to be a little bit careful with this one because you can't really pump mana into it before combat because it will tap itself before you can attack with it. So you swing with it, use your mana to pump up other things, and then when Jorn untaps it, you can dump all of your mana into it. It's still swinging even though it's tapped by its ability, but now it has a significant power boost and it gains indestructible. Next we have Chiller Pillar, which is a card from Modern Horizons that I didn't really think about when it came out, but you can pay six mana into it, which in combat, that's really just translates to three snow lands that you dedicate into this. And then it becomes a 5-5 five, five with flying in the middle of combat when it becomes monstrous, which is pretty good. Hailstorm Valkyrie, another new card. It has flying and trample already, and it gets plus two, plus two with every step, and it costs two snow mana into it. That's going to be scary effective against your opponents, and will get through a lot of their defenses. Next is Conifer Worm, which can get crazy big because it gets plus X plus X, where X is the number of snow permanents you control, including itself. If you have your commander out and a whole bunch of snow lands, which undoubtedly you're going to, this is going to get huge for only four mana, and you can do it multiple times if Jorn manages to untap everything. So this worm is gonna get swole. Now, those are all of the creatures that have effects that we can pump into them to make them bigger, but we have a couple of other things that you might wanna spend your mana on at or before combat so that you can get more advantage out of your combat. I'll start with Overwhelming Stampede, which is a sorcery, so you have to cast it before combat. And this just gives all of your creatures trample and a buff based on who has the highest power. At worst, that's going to be your commander Jorn, who has three power. So even if you have a board full of creatures and just giving it a plus three buff and trample to a whole bunch of creatures, and then after they swing, you can sink a whole bunch of mana into their abilities to get them even bigger. I feel like Overwhelming Stampede deserves a spot for that purpose. And then finally, we have Winter's Chill, which is an old card from 
Ice Age, which is part of the reserve list and definitely optional, but I thought it was a good include for my build of the deck. And finally, we have Icy Blast, which is not a snow spell, but surprisingly on theme for this deck. It costs X in blue and you tap X target permanence. And if you have a power for a greater creature, then they don't untap during their next untap steps. Even if you don't have the Ferocious at the bottom, this is really nice for spending right before you go into combat or right after you go into combat and you have a whole bunch of mana available to you to get rid of your blockers and go swinging into a board uncontested. Now, I'd like to talk about a couple of things to consider because you are going to have to attack with Jorn in order to make this strategy effective, which means he, he's not necessarily the strongest creature. You could be swinging into a dangerous board. So we want to either try to pump him up or give him some protection so that he's not so vulnerable. So in the realm of pumping him up, we have Black Blade Reforged. It's going to have a reduction to attach to him because he's a legendary creature, and it's going to give him plus one, plus one for each land we control. Since we're heavily land-based in this deck, that's all about snow lands and everything like that. This is going to be really nice to attach to Jorn and give him a huge buff to start swinging into somebody. At worst, he's a 6-6 six -six with this attached to him. We then have Lightning Greaves and Swift Foot Boots. Normally, I just try to include the Greaves, but both of these will give him some protection so that he won't be targeted by your opponents, and they will give him Haste, which means he can attack the first turn that he's out if you have the mana to equip for the Boots or, you know, just automatically with the Greaves. Greaves, great choice here, but Swift Foot Boots has some extra security if you don't get the Greaves. We also have Whisper Silk Cloak, which will similarly protect him from other people's spells and will give him unblockable, meaning that he can't die from something blocking him during combat, which is really nice. You could include other ones of this kind of effect. I just chose to include this one for this deck. Next, we have the most expensive card in the deck, which is Sword of the Animist, which will, when he attacks, let you search for a basic land and put it on the battlefield tapped. The great thing about having this in this deck is that you can order the triggers so that this resolves first. You find that basic land, you put it on the battlefield tapped, and then Jorn will untap everything that's snow. And since all of our basic lands are snow, it's going to untap that basic land. So you will have one more mana to spend on your combat phase with all of your other things that you're swinging with. And finally, we have Rhyme Transfusion. It's a snow enchantment aura. It gives Jorn a plus two plus one, so it's a nice little buff, and the ability to pay a snow mana and make it so he can't be blocked this turn except by snow creatures. Most of the time, we're not going to have any opposition to this, and if even if we do, we can swing at somebody else with Jorn to get around that. To me, Rhyme Transfusion is the surprise really, really good card with the strategy because Jorn seems to fit perfectly with everything that this card does. All right, now that we've gone through the main strategy points, I want to go through the rest of the good stuff that comes with snow. Naturally, we're going to be wanting to play a lot of snow permanents and all of these on tap, they can attack, they can have their abilities, and they're just going to be really, really useful to have on the battlefield and synergize really well with our snow strategy. First, we have some snakes with Ice Fang Kotal, Orin Viper, and Orin Frostfang. All of these are going to have some form of death touch. Obviously, Orin Viper is a little bit different because his effect isn't exactly death touch, but it's in most cases the same thing. It can get around a couple of weird edge cases. And all three of them will draw you cards. So all of those are some nice includes into the snow strategy and they help with our card advantage which we were we are definitely going to need next we have priest of the haunted edge this is basically a kill spell you can't use it on the first turn it comes out and you have to sacrifice it and it can only be used as a sorcery however it's a pretty good effect to get rid of somebody's commander or something that's troublesome on the board to just give them a huge negative and this gets around indestructible and other things. So this is really nice to have on the board. Next is Boreal Outrider, another new card. It says whenever you cast a creature spell, if snow 
of any of that spell's colors was spent to cast it, that creature enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. So basically, if you spent snow mana to cast creatures, then they enter with a little bit of a buff. Really nice, considering we have a lot of creatures in this deck and all of our mana is going to be snow mana. Next, we have Abominable Tree Folk, which, while it doesn't have any untap or mana sync shenanigans that we can do with it this is going to be really important for our combats because it's going to be plussed up for each snow permanent that we control and it also has a freeze effect on it to help with our combat as well so just an all-around powerful creature to include in our deck next we have draugr necromancer it doesn't really fit in with any of our other strategies but it's a snow creature and it helps us take advantage of our opponents so it's really nice he says if a non-token creature an opponent controls would die exile that card with an ice counter on it you may cast spells from among cards in exile your opponent's own with ice counters on them and you may spend mana from snow sources as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells so essentially we are taking advantage of our opponents having things die and i know a lot of people that play graveyard strategies this is really going to hose them and going to attract a lot of attention to get rid of before jorn so at worst he is removal fodder at best we can maybe get some really spicy creatures off of that next we have another commander from kaldheim Marit of the Frost, who can come in as a copy of any permanent I control, except it's legendary, it's snow, and if it's a creature, it has two additional plus one plus one counters on it and has changeling. We don't really need the changeling part for this deck, but it is really nice to have another snow permanent on the battlefield and to have a copy of something else that we have. Maybe we have a really big beater that we can take advantage of or another Orin Frostfang. In any case, it's some really good utility no matter what. Another legendary creature from Kaldheim, Narfi Betrayer King. He says others snow and zombie creatures you control get plus one plus one, and then you can pay three snow mana to return him from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So he's a snow lord is the best way to put him, and he's going to give a bump to all of our creatures. Just really nice to have around. And the last creature that we'll talk about here is Icebreaker Kraken. He costs a whopping 12, but he costs one less to cast for each snow land you control, which you're going to control a lot. When he enters the battlefield, artifacts and creatures your opponents control don't untap during their next untap step. Hopefully they're already tapped. He's an 8-8, and you can return three snow lands you control to your hand to return Icebreaker Crack to your hand. So really, he's just a big beater. He's really nice to have out another target for Marit to copy and maybe it will also help slow your opponents down. For some artifacts, we have Arkham's Astrolabe, which costs a snow mana to cast, and when it enters, you draw a card. This is just some helpful mana fixing, and it turns things into snow mana, essentially. Not that we have a problem with that, but it's kind of just a nice little cantrip to have on the battlefield. And then the other artifact I wanted to mention here was Sunstone, which is an interesting one. It says, pay to sacrifice a snow covered land to have all creatures deal no damage in combat this turn. Basically, it's a recurrable fog for your snow deck, and you can use this repeatedly to fog your opponents as long as you have snow lands to get rid of, and this can help you in a pinch if you're not very strong on the board presence. Next, I want to talk about Merit Lodge's Slumber. It's a legendary snow enchantment for one and a blue. It says whenever it enters the battlefield or another snow permanent enters the battlefield under your control, you scry one, and then at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 10 or more snow permanents, which is not going to be hard in this deck, you sacrifice it, and then if you do, you create Merit Lodge, a legendary 2020 black avatar creature token with flying and indestructible. It's pretty self-explanatory why this is in the deck. It's snow good stuff, and having a Merit Lodge on the board is never a bad feeling, but also you get that important scry ability to help you get some extra card advantage as well. Thermal Flux, which is an instant that costs a blue, and you either make target non-snow permanent become snow until end of turn, or target snow permanent isn't snow until end of turn. And then you draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. So it's a cantrip that also makes something into a snow permanent. This can be helpful for our mana dorks that we'll talk about later or some of our other creatures that you might want to during Jorn's untap ability. It's really just kind of an interesting card that can have some utility at, and at the very worst it just draws you a card. 
All right, now let's move on to our ramp and mana dork section. So this is kind of an interesting section because a lot of snow things have really good ramp utility with Jorn on them. So I wanted to kind of separate the snow things and then the normal ramp things that we'll be talking about. The For the normal ramp, we've got Finthorn Elves, Lanawar Elves, Farseek, Three Visits, and Cultivate. Those are the ones that are just in general for getting more mana or getting more lands onto the battlefield. And the three land tutors that we included will all get your snow lands that you want. Three Visits with the ability to get one of the fetchable snow duels that came out in this new set, which can help with some mana fixing as well. So... Those are all just kind of some extra ramp utility. You want to, you really want to be getting Jorn out as fast as possible, and the amount of available things to use early game for snow creatures was pretty minimal. So I wanted to include a little bit extra in the ramp category for that. For our mana dorks that are snow creatures, we have Boreal Druid, Rhyme Tender, and Sculptor of Winter. Boreal Druid will tap for a mana, but Rhyme Tender and Sculptor of Winter will untap snow permanence, and most of the time you're going to be targeting lands to be untapping with those. The really nice thing is that these still have utility after Jorn. They essentially let you get the use out of one more of your lands a second or possibly third time or possibly fourth time in the same turn. And so these are really nice to use. The other creature that we've included here is Spirit of the Alderguard, which will fetch you a snow land and put it into your hand. And it also gets pumped up for each snow permanent you control, which means it can get really, really big. But this can just be another ramp tutor that you'll probably want to include. For our mana rocks, we have Cold Steel Heart and Replicating Ring. Both of these are snow artifacts. Cold Steel Heart is pretty commonly known already, and it's a pretty good mana fixer, letting you choose whatever color you need at the moment. And then Replicating Ring, I still have to see this in action to see if that nine copy trigger ever really happens. But if it does, that's a ton more mana for Jorn if it ever goes off. So I would bet that this is going to be the target of the most artifact removal out of everything in your deck. But, you know, if you can get it off, that'd be pretty cool too. In the worst case, it's just a dark steel ingot, so it doesn't feel too bad to have this on the battlefield. Two more cards in this category relating to snow. We have Glittering Frost, which is an enchantment aura that you can enchant a land with. Make it snow, not that we need that, but it lets it tap for an additional color of the types that it produce. The biggest benefit out of this is that it is a snow permanent, and that counts towards our other things that care about snow permanents. And then last we have Into the North, which we'll just search for a snow land and put it onto the battlefield tap. You can find any of those snow lands that you have in your deck, and it's just a nice two mana ramp spell for the deck. Next, I wanna talk about the interaction and card draw in this deck. Now, this is going to be probably the least snow themed out of all of the sections, but there are still some powerful snow spells that have to do with drawing cards or interacting with our opponents. For our counter spells, there aren't any snow counter spells that I could find, so we have Arcane Denial, Counter Spell, and Saw It Coming. Saw It Coming being the new popular counter spell from Kaldheim. I think the Fortel mechanic on a counter spell is really interesting, and letting you cast it for two is basically the equivalent of having a counter spell. You just have to get it ready ahead of time. Next, we have Chill to the Bone. Really simple. Three and a black, destroy target non snow creature. No way that could be used against us. And then we have Dead of Winter, which is a sorcery for two and a black, and it says all non snow creatures get minus X minus X until the end of turn, where X is the number of snow permanents you control. This is going to be your. Toxic Deluge, this is going to wipe the board for everybody but you since you have so many snow creatures and it's basically just going to get rid of your mana dorks, if anything, and you don't need those when you're swinging out at people. Blood on the Snow is another board wipe, a new one from Kaldheim. It's a little bit more expensive at four and two black, but it says either destroy all creatures or destroy all planeswalkers, then return a creature or a planeswalker card with converted mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield where X is the number of snow mana cast on this spell. You can probably get one of your big beaters back on the battlefield and 
get it swinging again or you can just do this to Jorn it's put it in your graveyard and bring it right back so you don't have to pay that commander tax for our card draw the non snow spells are pull from tomorrow and blue sun zenith I figured X spells were a good choice for this deck because of the abundance of mana we're going to be trying to get rid of before combat or during combat and so these are both instant speed draw spells that we can use when we're trying to use mana with Jorn untapping everything then we have graven lore which is a snow instant which is really cool cost three and two blue scry x where x is the amount of snow mana spent to cast a spell then draw three cards most like almost definitely i don't see how this could not happen but almost definitely you're going to be scrying five and then drawing three cards that's pretty good card selection off of the top even if it does cost quite a bit the mana isn't really going to be a problem if you're casting this in the middle of combat which you can do with jorn for some sorceries we have glacial revelation and blessing of frost glacial revelation will let you look at the top six cards of your library grab any number of snow permanents from among them and put the rest into your graveyard you're going to get a lot of snow permanents from this most likely even just grabbing lands off the top feels really nice and then we have blessing of frost which will let us distribute plus one plus one counters to which will let us distribute up to four plus one plus one counters among creatures we control and then draw a card for each creature with power four or greater we have a lot of big creatures in this deck and a lot of opportunities to pump up a whole bunch of creatures during combat so we can use this in our second main phase after everything's already been pumped up and we have some extra mana laying around to pump them up even a little bit more and draw some cards all right before we talk about the alternate includes for the less budget friendly options let's talk about our mana base we since snowlands are a little bit more interesting we have a couple of interesting includes here first is faceless haven a new snow land that just taps for a colorless but you can pay three snow mana to turn it into a four three creature with vigilance and all creature types until the end of turn just another creature that you can swing during combat and even though it doesn't need to be untapped with Jorn you still get that extra mana after combat then we've got Frostwalk Bastion another snow land that turns itself into a creature and when it deals combat damage to a creature you tap it and it doesn't untap until it's a controller's next untap step which means that even if we can't get it through our opponent's defenses it's still probably going to do some damage to whatever it hits and our opponents are going to see that and probably let it through i've also included mouth of ronum which is probably the least utility snow land in the deck but it's still worth mentioning it can help us deal with a creature and if you do decide to play the other side of jorn this is really nice to recur and keep on pinging your opponent's creatures beyond that we have the three new snow dual lands including ice tunnel rhymewood falls and woodland chasm the three that are in sultai colors we also have shimmer drift veil vale, which is basically cold steel heart on a land and then we have 10 snow covered forests nine snow covered islands and nine snow covered swamps all right so that is the main portion of my deck but i do want to talk about some alternate includes that you can include if you have the budget or if you just want to try something different with the deck first we have some snow creatures that i didn't feel like made the cut for the deck it's rhyme feather owl and iceberg cancrix rhyme feather owl will make other things into snow permanence and then that will help pump it up as well as you know affect other things that care about snow permanence the reason why I didn't include it is because one it's really expensive to cast and two we don't really have a lot of utility for it since most of the permanents in our deck are going to be snow iceberg cancrix is cool if you want to go into more of a reanimator strategy get stuff into the graveyard whenever a snow permanent enters the battlefield which is going to be all the time but I didn't focus on the reanimation theme so I didn't include this one in the deck next is scrying sheets which is a great include for the deck and I would probably replace mouth of Ronam for this card giving you some extra off the top of the library utility and it can untap and so Jorn is just really really good with it however it is an expensive card which is why I didn't include it initially next i have doubling cube which sounds amazing to use with all of the mana that you're generating with jorn during combat just doubling the amount of mana that you have and exponentially in 
and increasing the amount of things that you can pump up before they deal damage. Really, really nice to have on the board. Also an expensive card. Next are Static Orb, Winter Orb, Stasis, and Back to Basics. And some of these are not expensive cards. Some of them are. They're, they're really not that expensive on the spectrum, but they are very mean cards. And basically on principle, I haven't decided to play them, but they do work really well with Jorn, especially because you're untapping everything on your own, so you don't need that untap step to take advantage of your lands, and these will just help slow down everybody else on the table. Next are Sword of Feast and Famine and Seedborn Muse. These will let you untap your lands an additional time in certain circumstances. If you want to have even more plentiful mana, this is a good pick for you especially Sword of Feast and Famine, which will help you in the post-combat main phase. But again, the sword is expensive, and the Seedborn Muse I didn't have a lot of utility for, since I'm not casting a lot of things at instant speed. Speaking of instant speed, you could include Vidalkin Orrery, that will help you cast creatures and other sorcery speed things during combat, while you can use that mana, that extra mana from Jorn. It's time to talk about the Merit Lodge in the room. While I did include Merit Lodge's Slumber, I didn't include Dark Depths, because it's not a budget card, and usually the cards that come with it are pretty non-budget as well. But if you're including Dark Depths in your deck, which is just another way to get Merit Lodge out, get a really big, powerful creature out, then I would also recommend finding a slot for Expedition Map so you can tutor it up, Thespian Sage so you can copy it and have that enter with no counters, and it essentially immediately becomes a Merit Lodge. And finally, I would also include Crater Hoof Behemoth and Finale of Devastation. Both are expensive cards, but they do the same thing as Overwhelming Stampede, but they do it better, giving a huge bonus to all of your creatures and will probably win you the game right on the spot. And that's it for my Jorn deck tech. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to be playing a different version of Jorn on our upcoming Duel of the Peaks episode. I look forward to playing that on camera. It won't be the same as this deck, but I hope you enjoy it anyways. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe for more deck building content. And remember to check out our Patreon. We have a bunch of perks that you are bound to enjoy, especially if you like the game of Commander. I hear there are a lot of Commander players over there playing Commander. We have a ton of fun with our Discord users playing remotely over Discord and sending sweet merch out. So go and check out those perks and find the one that works for you and sign up today. Again, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next Deck Tech gameplay video or otherwise. Stay safe out there.